Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many kings and prophets have desired to see what you see, and have not seen it. To hear what you hear, and have not heard it. I thank you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned and the wise and revealing them to the innocent and the simple. Around the clock, buses rolled from East Aleppo into rebel-held areas of the countryside nearby. And the exodus continued this morning, a stream of ambulances carrying the injured. It's estimated that eight to 9,000 civilians and rebel fighters have left so far crammed into any vehicle that moved, with no choice but to start again in unknown territory. Some found comfort, even joy, as they were reunited with friends they weren't even sure were alive. But for most, the evacuation has been both shock and heartbreak. Then suddenly, late this afternoon, someone started shelling. You can hear it in the background of this Syrian TV report. The reporter unsure where it's coming from. Each side accused the other of opening fire. Meanwhile, overseas, a massive suicide bombing. It happened in Turkey's central Heseret province. The bomb destroyed a public bus carrying off-duty Turkish soldiers. At least 13 people were killed, dozens more wounded. Officials say they believe they know who's responsible. Several people have been taken into custody who are associated with the PKK, a Kurdish militant group. Officials in Yemen say at least 30 pro-government soldiers were killed and 40 others injured after they were targeted by a suicide bomber in the southern port city of Aden. The soldiers were reportedly queuing to collect their salaries near a military base in the Kohor Maksar district when the attacker blew himself up. It comes a week after an attack by ISIL militants in the area which saw 50 troops killed. Authorities in Aden, Yemen's temporary capital, have struggled to establish control over the city against a backdrop of regular militant attacks against security forces. Seven people are dead, including a Canadian tourist, and nine others are wounded after gunmen carried out a series of attacks in central Jordan. We're hearing the gunmen have taken 14 hostages. Some may be students. It took place in Karak, a city and tourist destination known for one of the biggest crusader castles in the region, located around 70 miles south of the capital, Amman. <laughs> Just over the Russian ambassador's shoulder, the assassin waits, moments later, opening fire. Then, brandishing his weapon, his victim dying on the floor, he shouts defiance, the jihadi battle cry. And an oath of revenge for the carnage in Syria. Don't forget Aleppo, don't forget Syria, he shouts. Until these places are safe, you will not taste safety either. People huddle in the corner, crying, terrified. A child lifted up off the floor. The gunman stalks the room, shouting, identified by Turkish authorities as a 22-year-old police officer who used his police ID to enter the building. Outside, the ambassador's wife in tears. He is rushed to the hospital where he dies. 
62-year-old Andrei Karlov, a veteran diplomat known well to Vladimir Putin, who seemed shaken as he spoke tonight. There can only be one answer to this, strengthening the fight against terrorism, he said, adding ominously, the killers will feel it. The assassination apparently motivated by the fall of Aleppo, a city in ruins after a merciless assault by Russian and Syrian government forces, thousands dead, thousands more driven out, an appalling slaughter now apparently claiming another victim. An 18-wheeler with a cargo of steel tore through a crowded Christmas market in Berlin this evening. At least nine people are dead. About 50 have been hurt. The battered windshield showed the damage done when the 18-wheeler became a weapon. Witnesses said the truck jumped the curb, barreled into the crowd, and just kept going. Some of the wooden stalls of the popular Christmas market were flattened. Emergency crews struggled to reach victims stuck under the truck. German police said a passenger in the truck was found dead at the scene. They said the driver fled and a suspect was later arrested. The truck had Polish license plates and was registered to a Polish transportation company. German police have not said if the attack was terrorism, but it bore many similarities to the terrorist attack in France last July, when a truck tore through a holiday crowd and killed 86 people. ISIS claimed responsibility for that attack and has encouraged its supporters to launch similar attacks elsewhere. In Switzerland, police are still looking for the man responsible for a shooting at a mosque in Zurich. Three people were wounded after a gunman stormed into the prayer hall of a mosque an open fire. Two of the victims were severely injured. The gunman fled the scene and the mosque was cordoned off. Now, witnesses say the attacker was dressed in black and is believed to be about 30 years old. Police also confirmed on social media that a dead body was found near the mosque. But authorities say that this attack isn't being considered as an act of extremism. North of Mexico City, many are reported dead and wounded tonight after this. You are watching the leveling of a crowded market selling fireworks for Christmas and New Year's celebrations. Mexican federal police say there are at least nine dead and 70 injured, but that ex is expected to go up. There were an estimated 2,000 people in the market at the time stocking up for Christmas and New Year's, which many Mexicans traditionally celebrate with fireworks and rockets. And there are also reports the nearby homes have also suffered damage. China is experiencing the worst smog of the year, causing disruption to the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Schools, airports and highways have closed due to poor visibility. Beijing's capital airport suspended services between Monday night and Tuesday morning, resulting in more than 100 flights cancelled and dozens more delayed. For most people living in northern cities, face masks and air purifiers are must-haves. But now smog cannons are also helping to reduce dust created by the cement and construction industries. However, some environmental experts disputed the cannon's effectiveness. They're suggesting the main reason for the heavy smog is a lack of airflow, and warmer than usual temperatures in recent days has prevented pollution from dispersing. There is actual mutual influence of internal pollution transmission between Beijing and its neighboring areas, so the joint defense or control in the entire region is very important. In addition to the disputed smog cannons, local authorities have also introduced a raft of measures including restrictions on vehicle use to help cut emissions. However, forecasters warn these efforts probably won't be enough to get rid of the smog completely and will only provide limited relief. The country's top legislature is working to upgrade the current pollutant discharge fee system to a coercive and legally binding law, which will tax air and other pollutants at different rates. But it will take time to see whether it proves effective in fighting what is at the moment a losing battle.